So the start was very anonymous. Satoshi Nakamoto, no one knows till now who he is or she is or they are. And that was the start of uh, blockchain. Came through Bitcoin. And that's probably the unfortunate part. If you go to the next slide. Because till now, it's been already 10 years. Most of these 10 years have been overshadowed by the Bitcoin. And because of this association of uh, blockchain with the Bitcoin, a lot of negative media got also associated to blockchain itself. Only in the last two, three years, blockchain actually came out as a surf on a surface as a technology. And due to its disruptive features, it immediately got into the height of the hype. And for the last two years, we are seeing it one of the most searched words, uh, words on the uh, Google. So if you can see the uh, roadmap or the journey of uh, blockchain, you can see earlier few years, it was all silent. And then by the mid of fifth or sixth year, it started getting up into the shape. And now, since last two years, it has been accepted in the enterprises for the solution other than the databases, conventional legacy databases as well. So even the numbers for the future are very like encouraging for the blockchain. If we see the numbers for the spending on blockchain globally, and plus our region, Middle East and uh, Asia, is exponentially growing year by year. And that's the value, again, uh, the blockchain is having with it. The number of uh, corporate sectors coming into the blockchain, using it for its operations, is again on the rise. 86% of the financial service providers will be on blockchain, are using some kind of a blockchain for their operations by 2020. And also, if we see, the technology itself is growing. The transactions, the number of uh, transactions on Ethereum, which is the second most uh, populist kind of a blockchain, now 240 million transactions have already been done there. So this also is a testimony that the future is bright for the blockchain. Now, before we go and see what kind of a change catalyst blockchain is, and also at the same time, when I say it is a new mean of a creativity and a new type of a creativity, how it is going to be that. So before going to that point, let's have an understanding of blockchain, what it is. So blockchain is something which uh, the unconventional uh, world of uh, data structures are putting transactions on the ledgers. This is the world we are living at the moment. This is a world without blockchain. We are doing some transactions and putting them on the ledger. Ledger could be a piece of paper. Ledger could be a piece of uh, like a, some kind of a digital database. And where we are putting that ledger, centralized, controlled manner. YouTube is doing that, Google, Facebook, banks, governments, everyone is keeping them with them. And that's the world we are living at at this moment. Centralized, controlled information uh, in their piece of ledgers. And it is creating a honeypot for the bees kind of a situation. Who are the bees here? Hackers, insiders, who are having a, some kind of a ill kind of uh, intentions, and they play around with the data. Every now and then, we keep on hearing about the hacks done to big corporates, governments, entities like this. This is what we are experiencing. Now, blockchain is trying to come up with a new solution. And that solution is that it is removing or minimizing the role of the controlling authority. So the data is not in one single ledger. Data is distributed. One similar data is distributed across different nodes or across different entities or persons. They are having this. They all got connected. That's why it's called blockchain. And the blocks are having the data inside them, the transactions inside them. And they're all connected and consolidated. Whatever is in one ledger has been replicated in all other ledgers as well. This is done through the consensus algorithm. So the mathematics is behind it. So nothing relevant to the human intervention. And at the same time, it is heavily encrypted, powerfully encrypted by cryptography, which is a military standard encryption, uh, uh, encryption type. So one can see the value 
here. It's a digital database, decentralized, distributed, connected, consolidated, and at the same time, scripted or coded. So that's what blockchain is. It's a piece of box having the data secured through cryptography in it. And this is blockchain for the solution of a trust, as a platform for the trust. And trust is required in literally every particular industry or sphere of the world. Blockchain didn't came up as an altogether a new invention. It was basically a combo of existing technologies. Peer-to-peer -peer networking, timestamping, cryptography, and at the same time, smart contracts plus distributed databases, they were all present by the time of invention of the blockchain. Blockchain just put a combo and bring it all together and shape up as the technology we know now. Moving forward, we will see, I think, probably blockchain uh, coming up in the part of some kind of a new technology which will disrupt the world as well. The key features are disintermediation, like removing the intermediaries or uh, reducing their roles, resilience of the system itself. So blockchains are very resilient. We generally sometimes give the example that even, God forbid, there is a third world war, blockchain has the capacity to survive the third world, world war as well. So integrity and at the same time, the traceability of the data. These are also powerful features of the blockchain, which are the reasons why it is known as giant platform of trust. So the consensus algorithm, and at the same time, cryptography. So the cooperation or coordination between the network and confidentiality are the two reasons why it is known as the giant platform of trust. And trust, as I said earlier, is the reason why is it, it is accepted now in literally every walk of life. And we can say those walk of life are governance and uh, plus all the industries, we can say aviation. No, no, go forward, please. All, uh, yes, finance, governance, healthcare, entertainment, you name it. All the industries are using blockchain for some reason or another. Now, these, this uh, chart is very important. It comes from McKinsey and Co. And they came up with the very interesting fact that the best utilization for blockchain is with the public service sector, which of course is in the hand of uh, regulators, governments, and entities like that. So they have the topmost utility at the moment for the blockchain. And second utility is for the tech companies. And the third biggest utility is for financial service providers. So we can see there is a reason behind that. And the reason is all these are basically network-oriented sectors. And blockchain is a network-oriented solution. So this is the reason why blockchain is very much accepted in these uh, sectors. Now, coming back to the regulators or the governments and the blockchain, in the very early years of blockchain, there was a misconception that it's like oil and uh, water. No more the case. Actually, now, one of the best exponents of blockchain is the government of UAE, which I'm bringing as a use case here. And 50% of the government operations will be on the blockchain in, uh, by 2021. And this will save them a lot of uh, time, hours, and at the same time, uh, other factors as well. Now, <coughs> another sector which had a love and hate kind of a relationship with the blockchain is the financial sector. Again, in the early areas, banks were considered that once the blockchain will be there, banks will become dinosaurs. No more the case, and the banks are, at the moment, are the best buddies for the blockchain. And they are already using blockchain in their operations. 15% are already using it till now. We are expecting two-thirds of the banks or financial service providers will be on blockchain by 2020. So this is, again, a big success for the blockchain, which converted its enemies into allies. Moving forward, there will be a lot of application in the education sector at the same time in the supply chain, which will become, actually, this, this is called a, uh, like a thing that supply chain will be the next blockchain, or uh, blockchain will be the next supply chain because of its utilization in the sector. Aviation is also taking off with the blockchain, and at the same time, they are using it for three reasons, main reasons. <coughs> one of the reasons is enhancing the customer experience, and the second one is the uh, keeping the safe for skies, and the third one, obviously, will be the 
uh, connecting the ecosystem of the aviation. Now, blockchain is not just, if we go one back, blockchain is not just giving the support to the industries and other sectors. In fact, the other advanced technologies, one known as AI, is getting strength from blockchain. The project name is Mind AI, is also using it uh, to complement the parts of the AI which is missing. So blockchain is giving that strength to the AI, for example, the democratization of the AI applications, and at the same time, the main factor is the incentivization. So blockchain gives that layer to the AI applications as well. And a perfect application, again, for the blockchain is the next one, which is the IoT. So together, IoT and blockchain are shaping up as blockchain of things, rather than in the future, we'll be talking more about BOT, because e IoT is more like a internet of insecure things. And when we will be talking about IoT with the blockchain, it will be more like a BOT blockchain of things. <coughs> Moving forward. Now, we agree on this point that blockchain is a new wave of a change. But at the same time, if we see that blockchain has some barriers or challenges that it is not taking shape into a mainstream adaption. And those are the barriers which we'll be uh, discussing in the next slide. And that those barriers are, the first one is the lack of regulations are the mushroom growth of the blockchain. Since its inception, it's considered as a something which is against the regulation. And majority of the globe is still yet to come up for the regulations of our, around the blockchain applications. So this is a one big barrier even in uh, the country where we are at the moment, is having a blanket ban on the cryptocurrencies, which is a big application of the blockchain. So partially it is correct, partially it requires a consideration. Network effect, a big challenge. Blockchain without a utility in the network has very little strength. So bringing together a lot of competitors, a lot of other corporations in one system is a very challenging thing. So network effect is a big challenge and uh, blockchain, which blockchain uh, is facing at the moment. Integration and interoperability between blockchains, other blockchains, and plus the legacy systems. We cannot scrap the legacy databases on the legacy system. They are part and parcel. They, are, they will be having their say in the future as well. So currently, the integration between the blockchain and the non-blockchain, on-chain and off-chain, at the moment is a challenge. Scalability. Blockchain is a new technology, and at the same time, like all other technologies, it is also having some immaturity challenges as well. So a lot of research is still under uh, the ground, which is creating a performance gap for the blockchain. So that's why the scalability, protection standard solutions are not being seen in the, especially the private blockchain side. Security issues. There is a myth that blockchain is 100% secure. Actually, it's not the case. Blockchain is having its own security issues as well. Like, when you put data on the centralized system, you have to just secure one single system. Now, when you put it on a distributed system, multiple systems, you have to secure them as well, whether they are on cloud, whether they are on the physical space. So the challenge around the securing multiple nodes is again a challenge. And there are other associated security risks like 51% attack and so on and so forth. But very one, one big it, uh, like a challenge to me when I see the world of a blockchain is the lack of creativity to create solutions which blockchain is basically meant for. And that challenge uh, is what uh, I need to address today. And this challenge will, once been overcome, requires, uh, will get come up, uh, people will come up with a lot better solutions what they have, what we have at the moment with the blockchain. The analogy I came up with, <coughs> the six blind man and the elephant is the very much connected with this uh, example, which I want to say. Just like these blind people have never seen uh, the elephant before, we as a world, we have never seen or experienced the world of decentralization before, our distributed ledger system before, our in simple world, world of blockchain before. So we are all having a different lens to see this tool, this giant, in a different perspective. Someone is using it for different utility, and someone is using it for different utility, 
no one yet has came up with the exact kind of uh, utility for the blockchain. But it's not something to be worried of. When we invented uh, internet, and we started using it only for the emails and some part of a Google search, or not even the Google search, just the search engine, that was the start of the internet. And uh, similarly, uh, the start of the electricity was also to just power up the light bulbs. And then it started powering the machines, and then, of course, the computer. And now the whole world is connected through computers and internet. So the start is always small. Same is the case with the blockchain. It's just a matter of realizing what extent it can be used for. And that's the missing link. The creativity side for the solutions is missing. <coughs> so in my view, blockchain is a mean of a new type of a creativity. Till now, we've been creating centralized kind of a solutions, digital solutions which were meant for centralized structures. When it comes to the blockchain, it is meant for decentralized structures and at the same time hybrid as well. <coughs> Sorry. So the shift of economy basically is from the linear to the circular. And at the same time, the phenomena like gig economy, phenomena like uh, micro-tasking economy, and at the same time, the economy uh, phenomena of a sharing economy. These are the factors when we see the application of there should be a shift of creative solutions as well. So these are all drivers of the decentralized community. And we need to come up with the solutions of a decentralized or hybrid nature. So blockchain is a mean for that decentralized and hybrid solutions. The solutions where there is a requirement for the cooperation, coordination, rather than the confidentiality. The solution where there is a requirement of a lot of uh, connectivity and trust. The key to this creativity is that we have to change the approach we are seeing the blockchain as a technology. Blockchain, people consider it as, as a 80% as a technology and 20% as a process change or change in the mindset, change in the business process. In fact, it's the other way around. It's 80% change in the mindset, basically. Thinking decentralized, a hybrid from a centralized. That's where we are like having a gap. So once we reach to this approach, the level of uh, solutions we are creating through blockchain will be far different and far better than what we are having at the moment. Now, blockchain is not a problem looking for a solution. In fact, blockchain is a solution looking for a problem. We are in the new phase, and in this new phase, we have the opportunity to come up with the new Hotmail, come up with the new uh, Google, come up with new Facebook, our Airbnb, and et cetera. So there is an opportunity for all of us to come up with something very disruptive and very big. In the end, I would say blockchain is a magical thing, but we all have to be creative enough to become a, to, uh, come up with the blockchain genie and uh, use the best out of it. Thank you very much.